bought a $2,200 ball python. Look at that angry eyebrow. Hello. So I was debating what video I wanted to put out first, but uh, you guys made that choice very uh, easy for me. Yeah. Oh, hey friend, what did you do for your weekend? Oh my god, I had so much fun. You know, you know, Beth, I went out with her and we went to six parties and we just got so drunk. It was the best weekend ever. What did you do for your weekend, Taylor? I, I got, I got five new pets. So instead of redoing a whole new all of my pets video, I'm just gonna show you guys what I have now. You have to understand, I can't just keep making the same videos. That's not how, that's, that's just, bad. With that being said, this video is all about my five new pets. Yes, I went to the Arlington Reptile Expo and I told myself I was gonna film the whole thing, make a cool video out of it, and this is the only footage I got. And then that, that's it, that's it. The smiling little, the smiley face on a snake, that's it. I'm sorry. So everything I owned in my last All My Animals video, pretty sure I still own all of that. Nothing's really changed. But I have gotten some new animals. Here we have an empty cage. We're actually gonna start with that story because it's, it's a good one, I guess. At the Reptile Expo, there was a booth that had a very, very malnourished green tree python. And it was a juvenile. It was extremely, extremely dehydrated, obviously on its deathbed. And this was the last day of the expo, so if no one bought it, it was going to be shipped back over to where it came from. And obviously, it was not going to make it. Me being me, pretty much knew it wasn't going to survive, but wanted to at least give it a shot. So I bought all the things I needed for a green tree python and bought the green tree python. Shocker, it died. But I contacted the company. I talked with them. I told them I was disappointed I was in their booth. They talked things out with me. I think they handled it very well, the company. They didn't deny it or make excuses. They contacted all the workers that were at the booth, talked to them, told them what they did was not okay, how they didn't realize the snake wasn't sick, made no sense, and took care of the situation. And in addition to that, said they're gonna send me a healthy green tree python. So it wasn't about the money for me. I didn't, you know, need my money back. What I really wanted was that company to know what they did was not okay, and they took full blame for it. So it looks like the situation was resolved. You just have to look at it from this perspective and and this is the best way I can explain it. Animals, whether they be in the wild or in captivity, every once in a while there's a runt of the litter. They just don't make it. That's just how life goes. No matter how well you take care of an animal, there are runts of the litter that don't always survive. Now green tree pythons get extremely dehydrated extremely quickly. So what I believe happened was it looked okay when it was at the breeder's actual place and when they moved it out to the expo, it became dehydrated overnight and then looked like how it looked and obviously did not make Make it because it had something wrong with it. Now I still think the company should have noticed that and not had it on display but like I said they did not make excuses and they handled the situation very well. So I'm getting a green tree python pretty soon. I have the cage set up. Green tree pythons can be a little trickier than other snakes but I'm really confident in my setup and my ability to take care of the green tree python. So this next guy is one interesting story. I bought a $2,200 ball python. Some people buy Gucci bags, I buy pythons. Probably made out of the same stuff though, right? I just buy the living versions because it's 2017 and we don't need to wear animals, we need to love them. I did not pay 2200 They took off a couple hundred bucks because, you know, they were bargaining with me. So this is a firefly clown ball python. He has an eyebrow, so he looks permanently upset. Look at that angry eyebrow. This guy is three months old and he has no name yet. I have not named him. So when I went to the booth and got this little guy, I told the guy that was trying to get me to buy him, look, I came here for a Mexican black king snake, not for another ball python. And the gentleman I bought him from was like, listen, I can tell you like this guy, you buy him and I'll give you a Mexican black king snake for free. So then I was like, okay, here you go, take a bunch of money. So now I got a pretty, uh, so now I have a designer snake and a Mexican black king snake. If you want to help me out with name suggestions, feel free to comment below. I first debated naming him Pennywise because he's a clown ball python, but I don't really like the name Pennywise. This thing is going to live for like 30 years. I don't really know if I want to call it Pennywise for 30 years. I'm going to have this thing when I'm 50 years old. Okay, I'm going to put the little guy away. Now this little guy moves extremely fast, so hopefully he's a little docile for this, but we'll, we'll find out. This is my baby Mexican black king snake. My stupid nail is ruining the aesthetic of this shot. 
Hold on, there we go. So when they grow up, they look like this. They are beautiful, beautiful spooky noodles. Back when I worked at Pet Schmo, on my off time and when they put me on the register, I would go, they had a book about Mexican black king snakes and I would take it and I'd just read through it. I read that book so many times. I love these things. I love these guys. They're so beautiful to me. It's just a little gothic, little gothic snake and I love them. This guy doesn't have a name either. It is a male. I have no clue what to name him either. That's extremely close to my face. Oh, it's zooming in. Great. Beautiful. So, we got three snakes down. Now, next up, actually, I got Drogo a girlfriend. Drogo is my blue... Blue tongue skink. That is not who Drogo is. Drogo is my red eye crocodile skink. They actually do really, really well in pairs. Sometimes the male will excessively breed, and if that is the case, then you have to separate them. But red eye crocodile skinks do tend to do very well in pairs and even in groups. So let me introduce you to Danny or Denarius, and it is Drogo's girlfriend. Drogo, want to say hi? You can go back in there. Here they are together. They are in love. Danny is sitting on top of Drogo. You can tell the size difference is kind of noticeable. She is younger. They do so much. I got Danny in the same place I got Drogo and they quarantined her there before I purchased her. Please always quarantine your animals before putting them together. That's them, that's all they do. So those are all the ones I got at the Reptile Expo. But wait, but wait, but wait, but wait, Taylor, didn't you say you got five animals and I know how to count and that was only four? Good for you, good for you, you went to first grade. Green tree python's on its way, Mexican black king snake, ball python, new girlfriend for Drogo, What's number five, huh? <coughs> so I swore I'd never get a hedgehog again after some of my hedgehogs died from cancer. And then I got another one and now I got another one. Don't listen to me when I'm sad. I say stupid things and I take it all back. I love hedgehogs. This is Ella. Her name is short for Cruella. She has one black ear, one pink ear, and she has a very fuzzy little belly. It reminds me so much of Nala and Piper combined. I love her. What are you doing? Okay, so that is all my new animals. I hope you enjoyed seeing the new five additions to, or I guess you really only saw four of them. The fifth one won't be here until next Wednesday. And if you haven't checked out my merchandise, please check it out. I got hoodies now. I got the same things that, I have all those shirts out that all of you guys love, and I got them in hoodie form now too, and cute little buttons, cute little things. What are you trying to do? Can you tell everyone bye? Wave bye. Bye.